Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at XLM and we're also going to be taking a look at Stellar and Development Foundation, see what is going on there as well. There's a lot of fantastic news um, out there all around Stellar, um, MoneyGram, etc. We're going to dive into what that news is, what that looks like, and then obviously get into the technical analysis for XLM as well and see what we can see within the data here and what the likely outcome is going to be for the next few months as we go and close the end of the bull run towards the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. Um, so guys, as we get into this, if you find it useful, informative, maybe entertaining, hit the like button. I really appreciate that. If you're new, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell, tap on all notifications and you won't miss another update. Now guys, let's get into what has been going on with the news around Stella. Let's get things started with this fantastic piece here. So Ripple's rival Stella, and I'm not sure they are a rival. I think they, they are after different things, but you know, there are some, some lines that are crossing a little bit. Um, but basically Stella and Avant are in talks to acquire MoneyGram. So this is pretty huge news considering the distancing that MoneyGram took from XRP and obviously Ripple um, previously. So some stuff's been going on with the SEC lawsuit with Ripple. MoneyGram obviously took that PR approach of making themselves very distant from Ripple. And this move by Stella and Avant um, to basically acquire MoneyGram is absolutely massive. It does obviously mean that there is a play here for cross-border payments and all of that kind of good stuff. So um, MoneyGram International Inc., one of the biggest money transfer service providers in the US, is seeing preliminary takeover interest from Stellar's Development Foundation and Avant International. Stellar is a San Francisco-based nonprofit organization that supports the Stellar network. The latter is an open source platform for transferring its native token XLM using blockchain technology. On the other hand, Avant is a Boston-based global private equity firm and a serial investor in payments space. Um, initially, Avant has backed the company's um, you know, Avantive and Worldplay. Um, so basically, this is, a, again, another fantastic thing. They have obviously have a lot of history in this space. Um, so again, partnering up with the Stellar Development Foundation to acquire MoneyGram makes a lot of sense. Um, specifically, if we talk about digitalizing, uh, you know, cross-border payments and all of those kind of good things, um, why wouldn't Stellar Development Debt Foundation want to acquire MoneyGram and obviously uh, maybe put XLM in uh, instead of XRP for cross-border payments and all that kind of stuff? And obviously, Avant being specialists is specifically around investing into the payment space. It makes a lot of sense. So people familiar with the matter said that Stellar and Avant are working together on a potential MoneyGram acquisition. Uh, the sources remain, uh, however, remain anonymous and the information has not been officially confirmed. So we're in a world of speculation around it, but if this does actually happen, and uh, I think we're going to see some pretty interesting stuff happen for Stellar. And we'll go into what the technical side of Stellar currently looks like, but this could be a game changer in what the TA is currently predicting the outcome to be in the next few months. So meanwhile, MoneyGram stocks were up 11% to $11.49, valuing the company at $902 million. The stock is also up 265% in the past year. So previous uh, MoneyGram acquisition attempts. So for a while now, MoneyGram has uh, been a takeover target for many companies, fueled by technological developments um, and the pandemic. The world is increasingly shifting to online payment services um, from conventional ones. This is kind of obvious. And obviously we're looking at what Web3 is also going to do from an online point of view, and obviously how blockchains are you know, a pivotal role in all of that. So in 2017, for instance, uh, Alibaba owned Chinese financial services services, conglomerate Ant Group uh, agreed to acquire MoneyGram. However, the $1.2 billion deal never went through as US regulator authorities blocked it. Uh, additionally, one of MoneyGram's rivals, Western Union um, Co., reportedly made an acquisition bid last year to curb peer competition. Um, so rivalry between Stella and Ripple, obviously, the two uh, kind of big ones in terms of the payment space, uh, I guess. I mean, there's other others, of course. We can't ignore the others. But uh, these two have... Uh, an interesting relationship. Obviously, Jed um, helped set up the XRP. Ledger was over there. Ripple fell out, I believe, with Brad, set up the Stellar Development Foundation, cloned the XRPL, made a few tweaks to that, and hey, you've got Stellar. Um, so obviously, they got a bit of a relationship and a bit of history between them. Now, this is obviously 
what we're talking about in terms of a rivalry, at least that's how it's been articulated here in this article. Now, MoneyGram has been a remittance partner of the fintech Ripple Labs since 2018, when it began testing international payments in digital currencies. Now, MoneyGram um, provided liquidity for Ripple's real-time XRP settlement system, uh, and it was actually paid, I believe, quite nicely in XRP as well. Um, however, back in December, as we spoke about earlier, the SEC filed that lawsuit against Ripple and MoneyGram terminated its relationship with the Ripple remittance network. Um, and obviously, you know, the SEC, um, I feel, are going to end up settling or lose this case. They definitely don't seem to be doing a very good um, job over there at the moment. So, yeah, I think ultimately the long term future of Ripple is fine. It's good. It's in good standing. And they're actually onboarding more businesses overall. Um, but this particular move by Stella will hurt, at least in my opinion, um, Ripple and, and their attempts to kind of, you know, sort this cross-border payment issue out. Um, so it's an interesting bid and it's an interesting move, right? So um, Stella was obviously launched by Jed back in 2014, um, and he obviously was one of the co-founders of Ripples. And um, Michaela uh, left Ripple um, after that fallout uh, with the top execs um, due to differences in opinions. Um, and I'm not sure if anyone really knows truly what goes on behind closed doors, but obviously it was a significant falling out um, Jed is still paid in XRP, um, and he does actually drop it on the market, and, and that does affect the XRP price from time to time as well. So it is uh, a percent of volume, I believe, that he's allowed to sell. So obviously, the higher the price goes, or the more volume of XRP, the more that Jed will drop down on the market. That will eventually come to an end at the rate of sale that Michaela has. Um, but obviously, he's uh, I feel he's doing this as it's a, a no brainer, really, you would. If you're trying to obviously increase the value of XLM, you're going to go after the competition. You're going to go after all these uh, ex partners of um, Ripple. You're going to obviously try to affect the Ripple pricing. You're going to try to squeeze that as best you can as well. So uh, Mikaela isn't doing anything that none of the rest of us would do. Although personally, I don't like it. Um, it is kind of what is natural, I guess, to, to many humans in the space. But nonetheless, it is what it is. But this is fantastic news, guys. I think this is going to be really interesting to see how Stellar, um, uh, Stellar Development Foundation really go do go ahead and actually conquer this one. So um, obviously, Danielle Dixon does a fantastic job. I've always said this about Stellar's Development Foundation. Strong leadership. Um, you see this with a very few blockchain projects. But when that leadership is that strong, um, you have to have good, solid faith in the project. So I do own Stellar. I have done for a while. Uh, as has Chris, as has many of my family members as well. Stellar is a, a fantastic project and we really do like it. So let's start talking about what is going on in the technical analysis for XLM. So XLM is obviously the native token uh, or native coin to the Stellar network. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on. So Stellar here against the USDT with the weekly chart is where we are right now. And we are using Binance as the data source. Now on here, there's a few things that we obviously need to acknowledge. One, we have two Fibonacci retracement tools. The first one on the far left-hand side over here, this is indicating to us the all-time high and the low after the uh, previous bull run. This is indicating where we are likely to see Stellar push up to uh, in the second half of this year because Stellar hasn't actually broken its all-time high just yet. Okay, so this actually indicates that we should be looking at that first price target of $1.50, the second target is $2.41, um, third is $3.32, and then at the very top there, um, the 4.236 extension of the Fibonacci shows us $3.88. Now, the second um, Fibonacci, the one on the right-hand side, shows us the high that we've had uh, most recently. This was up in uh, in May. We obviously have the pullback and where it bottomed out. This Fibonacci using those parameters actually shows us potentially moving up in the next wave uh, up to about $2.74. Now, obviously, there's a slight variation between these two. Um, I'm obviously more risk adverse. I will be selling on the way up and I will be paying attention to the Fibonacci on the right hand side um, to make sure I lock in profits at these key levels and obviously leave a little bit in the tank in case we did go for an extension on this over here. Now, obviously, with these things on the chart, this is only really based on the uh, fundamentals that we've seen in the space right now. This has no bearing 
on anything that may be coming in the future. So i.e. let's say the Stellar Development Foundation does acquire MoneyGram and MoneyGram decides to experiment using XLM as uh, a means of digital payments and transfers and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and if that is the case, then you could potentially start to see some fundamental shift inside the technicals here as well. Now, obviously you can speculate to that um, to no end. No one knows what this is going to look like until we start to see some of this stuff actually happen. So um, for now, I'm going to rely on what is here in front of us. The other thing that's on this particular chart is that stochastic relative strength index. This shows us that we are down at 2.6. Now on the stochastic relative strength index, anything lower than 20 is oversold, anything above 80 is overbought. This is indicating that we have pretty much reached rock bottom and I believe we were at rock bottom when we actually bottomed out down here. Now, this is an important note because obviously with the manipulation that's been going on with Bitcoin, etc., we have seen um, most of these altcoins, including Bitcoin as well, actually reaching zero, right? Um, Bitcoin was at one, uh, 0 0.12 um, on the stochastic relative strength index, right? And obviously when the, you're at the rock bottom, there's nowhere else to go but to the upside. This is what we've seen in the last couple of days with Bitcoin. This is what you're seeing today with Stellar, right? Everything is starting to move up. Um, but again, you know, sometimes, um, you know, after a little while of moving up, you do have to fall down. I'm not saying that a uh, the bottom has been found just yet. We need to obviously get above that yellow box area here to be super confident that we're moving on up ahead. And this comes in at that 786 area on the Fibonacci retracement. So right now on this weekly chart, it's telling us a lot of information. It's telling us that Stellar has not reached its all-time high. It's telling us that uh, there is some interesting levels that we should be expecting on the next leg during the second half of the year. It's also showing that we can't really drop down any lower because we're already at 2.6 and incredibly oversold. And if we are to expect to push the price down any lower for seller, we first of all have to push the price up. Been talking about this for a while now, it shouldn't be any surprise. And hopefully you were not shorting Bitcoin when I said it was at 0 0.12. That would have been a very foolish thing to do. With that being said, if you did, let's hope you haven't lost too much money. Now, the expectations are to push the price up a little bit further and then assess the situation. Are those institutions going to manipulate the price even further and push Bitcoin down? Of course, we have to obviously take into consideration many different factors and a lot of these different timelines as well. So let's start um, getting into what is going on with Stellar, but on the daily chart rather than the weekly. So again, here we can focus in specifically on what's going on with the Fibonacci retracement tool that was on the right hand side with our yellow box area and any potential downtrends or uptrends forming. So right now we obviously do have um, our Fibonacci, we can see here there was a downward trend that was basically pretty consistent, right? It was down here. And no matter which way you want to look at it, it kind of broke out, right? There's no clear pattern here now that's forming, right? So you could say that you were down here, you were trending, it was clearly getting to a bit of a breaking point and it has broken through. Um, so from a trend line, you can see that pretty clearly. Now you can see a double tap on the bottom area of the Fibonacci, right? So right down here, we can see tap one uh, and tap two, right? So a double tap, in this nature and then up, right? So this is pretty common as well. You see this quite a lot. Um, and you can look back across pretty much most projects, uh, most particular altcoins um, across the years and you'll find double taps happening everywhere. A double tap is a confirmation of a support line and that's what you are seeing here. Sometimes it takes three taps on the line to get things really moving, but um, this is a positive that you've come down to this area, we've hit the line and we've continued that growth to the upside. Now, in terms of buying, if you were looking to potentially purchase anything, um, there were obviously a couple of clear areas that you might want to be might have wanted to pay attention to. So I'll draw on a yellow box just for future reference in case we were to ever potentially pull back down. This here is going to be that interesting area for us. And again, we can see that there was major kind of resistance at this point, which is why we're double tapping on it. Um, and again, the wicks, they come into this area and they haven't stayed down here for too long. So when we actually pulled down most recently, when Bitcoin broke that 30K, Stellar actually fell down a little bit lower and went into this buy area and then it has shot on out of here being oversold. So right now that's an interesting just to reference. And if we do go back, they might want to acquire some more in this area if Bitcoin was to go and get pulled down a little bit further. Now, um, what's the other thing that we want to look at here? Well, we can see that stochastic relative strength index is at 67 and 35 retrospectively, uh, which means there's still potential to push the price up on the daily chart here before even starting to think that we might actually start to see a correction. 
With this being said, let's go ahead and take a look at that hourly. The hourly, of course, is where it's going to see a lot of that sensitivity. Here you can see this fantastic run that Stella has been having, right? This really good run here. Now, obviously, we can see that when we were down here at this point here, we were actually in the overbought situation. And at this point in time, so was Bitcoin. And we were calling um, Bitcoin to basically potentially pull down a little way. But of course, it was unable to because it was already oversold on that daily chart and of course that weekly chart. This is an important note because basically lots of, lots of people were shorting Bitcoin because it was oversold on the hourly chart on the stochastic relative strength index, but it was also below that 30K level. What people were potentially neglecting was the bigger time pieces, right? What was the daily showing you and what was the weekly showing you? They were actually saying it couldn't really go down and therefore it had to stay up, up, up here in the overbought area. And Stella was also in the same situation, right? We saw that it was basically oversold on the daily, oversold on the weekly, and therefore when it was overbought on this hourly, it couldn't really pull down any further. So instead, what you started to see was interesting kind of stabilization and then volume growing at the end there. So what you saw is a, a bit of a pullback right here when it was possible to pull back um, and then it moved right back up again, got out of this area pretty quickly. And then obviously it had some really interesting volume drops here and um, loss of momentum. We actually corrected our stochastic relative strength index on the basis of that momentum shift. And then we saw this volume come in most recently and we really had taken advantage of that space and pushed the price back up into the overbought area. This could be rinsed and repeated multiple times over. And this is testament to how low we are on that weekly chart. Now, obviously I said we got more room on the daily. So again, for Stella specifically, I would expect that we'll continue to grow a little bit and then we'll have a pullback, find good support line. There's definitely some areas here that are good strong support lines coming in at 24.4 for example so if we were to potentially pull back that's going to be an interesting area to be watching out for um, and again we're going to push further up in my opinion uh, as we stay up in this overbought area until our daily stochastic relative strength index also reaches overbought and in doing so our weekly should actually move up from the, the 2.5 that it is maybe into about a 10 or something like that that gives it room to pull back but not a significant amount. So we're gonna to have to watch how Stella kind of plays its part along with Bitcoin, along with everything else in the space. But you know, ultimately bringing that weekly chart down to as low as it has been, and considering it is a large time period, we are looking to steadily move the price of Stella and many of these other altcoins to the upside over the next few months before we actually see the peak of the bull run towards the end of the year, beginning of next year. It's not going to move in straight lines. It's going to take weeks, months to see happen. Um, but we will be going after these higher numbers, I believe, in at least in my opinion. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Um, Chris is not a financial advisor. It's important that you do your own research, as I like to say, D-O-F-R, um, for all those haters out there. Do your own research, guys. Um, do your own technical analysis. Copy what I have shown you on the charts here and see if you come to the same conclusions that I do. Guys, if you have found this video useful and informative, then do go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, tap on all notifications, and you won't miss another update. Guys, with this said, done and out of the way, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.